How do graphing calculators help us solve problems involving normal distributions? In this lesson, you will learn how to solve problems involving the normal distribution by using a graphing calculator. Let's review. The normal CDF function on a graphing calculator can be used to determine the area under the normal curve between two values. We use this function when the threshold value on the horizontal axis is known and the percentage represented by the area under the curve is unknown. Let's return to the milk jug example from the last lesson. Recall that this scenario was about a milk bottler filling half gallon jugs. If the machine is set to fill each container with 64 ounces of milk, the distribution of volumes of all the bottles filled in one week by this machine is approximately normal with a mean of 64 ounces and a standard deviation of 8 tenths of an ounce. In the last lesson, we used a graphing calculator to determine the percentage of bottles that were underfilled by the machine. We could use the same procedure to determine the percentage of the jugs that are overfilled. Suppose that the jugs being filled can hold 65 ounces if they are filled to the very top. In this case, the machine dispensing more than 65 ounces would result in overflow, which the manufacturer would want to avoid. If the volumes are distributed as we've said, what percentage of half-gallon jugs receive more than 65 ounces of milk? We can solve this problem by making a quick sketch and then pulling out our graphing calculator. Don't worry if your graphing calculator looks different from the one shown here. All modern graphing calculators have statistical functions and can perform these calculations. On this model, we start by pressing the menu button on the calculator and then use the menus that appear on the screen. We choose statistics, distributions, and then normal CDF. Now we need to enter the numbers specific to this problem. We use 65 as the lower bound, infinity or some arbitrary big number like a thousand as the upper bound, 64 for the mean, and 0.8 for the standard deviation. In this case, the function returns 0.10565, which means that about 11% of the jugs will have a volume exceeding 65 ounces. The manufacturer can expect that about 11% of the jugs will overflow. Sometimes we want to perform this operation the opposite or inverse way. That is, we know the percentage and are looking for the corresponding value on the x-axis. A graphing calculator can be used to find some threshold value that a given percent of the data is above or below. This is related to the idea of percentiles, which are values that a certain percent of the data is below. The question shown in the graph here could be worded like this. What is the 95th percentile volume for half-gallon jugs? To answer this question, we start as we did before, making our sketch by hand and then taking out the graphing calculator. After pressing the menu button, we choose statistics, then distributions. Remember that when we knew the value on the horizontal axis and wanted to know the percentage, we used normal CDF. Now we know the percentage and are looking for the value on the horizontal axis. We are doing the inverse process, so we use the inverse normal function. This function takes the percentage under the curve as its input and returns the value on the x-axis that the given percentage of observations are below. This is an important thing to remember. The inverse normal function will interpret the area you input as the area under the normal curve coming from the left. This is perfect for percentile problems because a percentile is a value less than which a certain percentage of the data lies. Back to the milk jug problem. We input 0.95 for area, 64 for mean, and 0.8 for standard deviation. The calculator returns 65.3159, which means that 95% of the jugs contain about 65.3 ounces or less. Remember, the inverse normal function interprets the percentage you put in the calculator as an area under the normal curve coming from the left. If we want to determine a value that corresponds to an area under the curve to the right, we have to think about the problem differently in order to use the inverse normal function. We will encounter this situation in the next example. Suppose we want to know the volume that 72% of the milk jugs exceeds. In order to use the calculator's inverse normal function, we need to recognize that the answer to this question is the same as the answer to the question, what is the 28th percentile volume? Once we make this translation, we are able to use the inverse normal function on the graphing calculator as we did in the last example. We enter 0.28 for area, 64 for the mean, and 0.8 for the standard deviation. 
The calculator returns 63.5337, which is the value on the horizontal axis that corresponds to an area of 0.28 to the left under the normal curve. 72% of the milk jugs will contain a minimum of around 63.5 ounces of milk. Let's review when to use normal CDF and when to use inverse normal. When you're looking for the percentage, you use normal CDF. When we know the percentage and are looking for the threshold, we use the inverse normal function. In this lesson, you have learned how to solve problems involving the normal distribution by using a graphing calculator.